Okay, it's seven o'clock, so we are live and we are ready to go on our first ever uh, remotely broadcasted city council meeting. Just some housekeeping orders before we call the meeting to order. Uh, this is something that Ms. Kent helped me with. Some other uh, committees have been using this. It's a script for uh, remotely conducted meetings. Uh, as a preliminary matter, this is Paul Guanci, President of the City Council. Before beginning the meeting, I'd like to announce that this meeting is being recorded by the City of Beverly and live streamed by BevCam on both Channel 99 and via BevCam's YouTube channel. I'm confirming that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. So if you could all type in me, I can check to make sure everybody's good. Council Flowers, Councilor Rotundo Feldman, Houseman, Councilor Ames, Councilor Rand. I know Miss Kent is here. That doesn't add up to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's Council Flaherty. Thank you. Um, introduction to the remote meeting. Good evening. This is an open meeting of the Beverly City Council is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's orders suspend the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participate Participation is required by law, and we will need to do that at our next meeting because we have five or six public hearings that we'll schedule this evening. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and televised live. Accordingly, please be aware that other participants or viewers may be able to see and hear you, and anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. You have the option to turn off your video if you're participating via computer. All participants should keep their microphones or phones muted unless recognized by council president to reduce background noise and feedback. If you'd like to speak, as in the previous meeting, write me in chat and the council president will call on you when it is your turn to speak. Very importantly, tonight, every vote that we take will be a roll call vote. So my uh, little spiel at the end of every order will be uh, question comes on the adoption, uh, the acceptance of the proposal and the adoption of the order, and then I'll say roll call, and Miss Kent will go down through the list. Um, and I think that that's where we're at right now. So I will say call to order this uh, regular meeting of the Beverly City Council, Monday, April 13th, 2020. Ms. Kent, could you please call the roll? Ames? Unmute Ames. and say here. Unmute yourselves and just say yep. okay. here. Feldman? Here. Flaherty? Here. Flowers? Here. Brady's? Here. Houseman? Here. Rand? Here, Rotundo. Yeah. I am here. Councillor Houseman, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? If so, you can put the uh, screen to, uh, to my uh, location, you will see that I have a American flag behind me. And I don't know if you can see it. Everybody can see it. We can see you also. OK. Uh, all right, so I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States of, of America, United States, States of America, and to the and republic, to the republic for which, for which it stands, stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God, individual, individual with liberty, with liberty and justice, justice for all, for all. Thank you, Councilor Houseman. And I have. Um, 
We have communications from, is honor the mayor, we have communications from other city offices and boards. What we can vote on uh, from the floor, that's what we'll do tonight. Uh, we can do that uh, because of rule 22 and uh, city council rules and orders. And at the end of the meeting, we'll have uh, uh, reports from committees and Ms. Kent will read out the things that are in committees, finance and property, legal affairs and public services, and we'll vote them out as a whole. So that said, let's go to acceptance of the minutes. I would entertain a motion to accept the minutes of our previous two meetings that were held, our regular meeting on Monday, March 9, 2020, and our committee of the whole meeting, which was held on Wednesday, March 25th, 2020. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Amy? Say yes. yes. Every vote's a roll call. Yes. Feldman? Yes. Flaherty? Flaherty? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Prades? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. And Guadalupe? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Now we'll move on to communications from His Honor the Mayor. Order number 87. Dear Honorable City Council, I'm pleased to inform you that the City of Beverly has been awarded a $7,974.36 FFY 2020 Community Traffic Safety Project Grant from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Office of Grants and Research. Funding for this grant is made possible by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, this grant funding will be used for the purchase of child passenger safety seats and to provide educational information outreach regarding the safe installation of child car seats. The Beverly Fire Department maintains a child passenger safety seat installation inspection station, which is free to the public. Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, requires both city council and mayor approval before any grant, earmark, donation, or gift to the city can be expanded for this prescribed purpose. I therefore request the City Council approve this grant by taking action on this matter at your next meeting. Thank you. Sincerely yours, Michael P. Cahill, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Kent. I would entertain a motion to approve that request. So moved. Second. Uh, all those in favor, roll call, please. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Flaherty? Yay. Flowers? Yes. Brady? Yes. Kaufman? Yes. Rand? Fernando? Yes. Guanti? Yes. yes. Very good. Uh, now, order number 88, Ms. Kent. Order number 88. Dear Honorable City Council, I am pleased to inform you that the City of Beverly has been awarded a $4,980.90 FFY 2020 Child Passenger Safety Seat Grant from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security Office of Grants and Research. Funding for this grant program is made possible by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. This grant funding will be used for the purchase of child passenger safety seats with a focus on providing them for disadvantaged families in Beverly. The Beverly Fire Department maintains a child passenger safety seat installation inspection station, which is free and open to the public. Mass General Law 44 Section 53A requires both city council and mayor approval before any grant earmark donation or give to the city can be expanded for this prescribed purpose. I therefore request the city council approve this grant by taking action this matter on your upcoming meeting, April 13, 2020. Thank you. Sincerely yours, Michael P. Cahill, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Kent. I would entertain a motion to accept that request from Mayor Cahill. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, roll call. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Flaherty? Flowers? Yay. Yes. Brady's? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. Guanty? Yes. Ms. Kent will go to order number 89. Dear Honorable City Council, I am pleased to inform you that the City of Beverly has been awarded the following grants from the Mass Department of Transportation, Mass DOT, Aeronautics. A mower with solar canopy for $30,000 with no match. Tree removal, $8,000 with a 2,000 airport match. Snow plow lower, $120,000 $120, with a $30,000 airport match. 
propane tractor with attachments, $70,607.46, no match. Total grant funding awarded is $228,607.46. Funding for these grants will be used for required maintenance and improvements at the Beverly Regional Airport. The tree removal and snowblower grant requires matches of $2,000 and $30,000 respectively, which will require a transfer from the airport enterprise fund. This transfer request will necessitate a public hearing prior to any final action by the City Council. In addition to the transfer request, Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A, requires both City Council and Mayor approval before any grant, earmark, donation, or gift to the City can be expanded for their prescribed purpose. I therefore request the City Council approve these grants as well as the requested match transfer by setting a public hearing at your meeting on Monday, April 13, 2020. Thank you. Sincerely yours, Michael P. K. Hill, Mayor. Okay, I would entertain a motion to uh, accept the grants. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call. Haynes? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Clarity? Yay. Flowers? Yes. Brady? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotendo? Yes. And Blanky? Yes. And Miss Kent, we didn't talk about setting a public hearing for this portion of the order. Um, we did not. So we would. Correct. So I would entertain a motion to set a public hearing for Monday, April 27th at um we'll do eight ten uh eight ten would be great so okay. moved second roll call Ames yes Feldman yes Flaherty yay Flowers yes Brady's yes Houseman yes Rand Yes. Rotundo? Yes. Bobby. Yes, thank you. Um, and now let's move on to order number 90. Okay, 90. Hold on one sec. Dear Honorable City Council, I am pleased to inform you that the City of Beverly has been awarded a $35,286 district incentive grant for COVID-19 response funds. This grant funding is part of a regional grant which will benefit several North Shore communities. Beverly has received the uh, aforementioned funding via its host community Salem. The funding is specifically for local health with a priority towards COVID-19 surveillance and case identification, including contact tracing. Mass General Law, Section 53, Chapter 44, Section 53A requires both City Council and Mayor approval before any grant, earmark, donation, or gift to the City can be expended for their prescribed purpose. I therefore request the City Council approve this grant at your meeting on April 13, 2020. Thank you. Sincerely yours, Michael P. K. Hill, Mayor. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve that request. So moved. So moved. So Second. And a roll call Second. to accept. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Brady? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. And I know that our Director of Grants, Catherine Barrett, is listening in uh, or watching. Uh, Ms. Barrett, do you want to make a comment about any of those grants, or are they pretty straightforward? They're pretty straightforward, but I just want to thank everyone for um, reviewing them tonight and accepting them and approving them, particularly the COVID-19 one. We desperately need that, those funds to um, support uh, Bill Burke and our public health department and, and Teresa as well. So thank you. Any questions for Ms. Barrett while she's on? Members of the council? Thank you, Ms. Barrett. Your attendance you. is much appreciated. Thanks. Okay, we will go on to order number 91, Ms. Kent. Order number 91. Dear Honorable City Council, I respectfully request that you approve a transfer from the Airport Enterprise Fund balance of $100,000 to fund work associated with the testing and monitoring of property at the airport. This ongoing work is necess necessary to comply with DEP requirements. 
Please initiate action on this matter at your next city council meeting, April 13, 2020. This transfer request will require a public hearing be set prior to a council vote. Thank you, until you are Michael P.K. Hill, Mayor. And I would entertain a motion to set that public hearing for Monday, April 27, 2020 at 7.55 p.m. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call in favor? Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Brady's? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. And Guanfu? Yes. Uh, I would entertain a motion to accept a late file on order number 96 for Mayor Cahill. Order so moved. moved. Second. And a roll call? Ames? Yes. Kit Feldman? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Brady's? Yes. Osman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. Guanzi? Yes. Ms. Kent, the order, please. Order number 96. Dear Honorable City Council, in September of 2018, the city and all AFSCME units agreed to the terms of a three year contract agreement. The contract was funded and implemented as outlined subsequent to that. All other bargaining units either reached agreement or were granted an award for the same contract period. In an effort to be fair to all units, the city has offered and some units within AFSCME have accepted on additional component to the original agreed upon contrast. Attached to this correspondence is a signed sign, side letter agreement for the two AFSCME units that have agreed to the terms of the side letter. I respectfully ask that you approve a transfer request of $16,000 $464 from the reserve from union negotiations 11324-57810 to be placed into the school department budget 13104-57000. I ask the city council to initiate action on this matter at your next council meeting to transfer a request will require a public hearing be set to before the prior prior to the council vote. Thank you, Michael P. Cahill, Mayor. And I would ask before I ask this at the public hearing if our finance director, Brian Ailes, or our mayor, uh, Michael Kale, would like to make a comment. If not, that's fine. We can save her for the public hearing. Okay, I would entertain a motion to, oh, somebody's chiming in. No? Yeah, Mr. President, it, it, it's me. It's it's Mary Kale. I, I just want to uh, thank you folks for uh, taking these on. and. Uh, definitely, I'll have something to say during the public hearing. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Your Honor. So I would entertain a motion to set that public hearing for on April 27, 2020 at 7.40 p.m. So moved. So moved. I heard a second. Ms. Kent, a roll call, please. Haynes? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Brady's? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotondo? Yes. Guanzi? Yes, thank you. Uh, I would entertain a motion to accept the late file on order number 97 from His Honor the Mayor. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Clarity? Yes. Flowers? Mm -hmm. Yes. Brady? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. Guadzi? Yes. The order, Ms. Kent. Order number 97. Dear Honorable City Council, I hereby appoint subject to your review as provided in section 2-10 of the Beverly City Charter, Ms. Darlene Wynn to serve as Director to Planning and Development. Sincerely yours, Michael P. K. Hill, Mayor. Uh, we can't do anything with that tonight, but we will refer that to the Committee on Legal Affairs. Uh, now is a good time to thank Aaron Clausen, our outgoing planning director. I know that he's the new director of planning in Lynn, and of course, we wish him the best. Uh, now, either Brian Ailes or Mayor Cahill, you wanted to introduce another late file. I yeah, I have one. Mr. Oh, you do. You got the one. You got the one from the solicitor, Ms. Kent. Um, yes, yeah, Stephanie just emailed it to me. Okay. So, I'm happy to explain. 
I'm happy to explain a bit after she reads it, Mr. President, if you'd like. Okay, I would entertain a motion to accept the late file. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Crates? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. Wanty? Yes. Uh, the late file, Ms. Ken. Uh, it will be late file will be number 98. Order that the uh, dear Honorable City Council, I think it will probably say, that the City Council accept a gift of tangible personal property on behalf of the City in accordance with Section 58 and a half, Chapter 44 of the Mass General Laws in the form of the face masks already donated by and to be donated by private individuals and organizations to the City for the purpose of providing residents, entities, and or others in need of all others in need of masks during the COVID-19 emergency. Sincerely yours, Michael P. K. Hill, Mayor. Great, thank you, Ms. Kent. Your Honor? Thank, thanks, Mr. President. Uh, yes, so th this is, um, everything's moving fast and I appreciate your uh, willingness to take this uh, as a late file. We have, um, as I think you know, we put out the call for volunteers uh, when, when we um, uh, started really promoting uh, and advising strongly that we need people to wear face coverings uh, when they're out and about in public and, and when they go uh, shopping, et cetera. Um, so um, we now have several dozen, I think it might be in, in, in the range of about 80 uh, masks that have been made by volunteers that we want to accept. Uh, we also just in the last few days have had two uh, sizable um, offers to donate um, uh, surgical masks to the city um, that we will uh, try to, you know, we're, we're going to be working with our COVID-19 task force tomorrow at a meeting um, and we'll be working to communicate with a lot of our community partners. Um, I'm sorry. Um, working to communicate with partners who are um, um, in the medical uh, field who operate um, some uh, really challenged congregate living settings, et cetera, around um, around how to best utilize that resource. And so what we're asking is is for the ability to accept uh, what's being offered and future offers of um, materials that could be considered PPE, personal protective equipment, um, as, as a way of trying to help uh, meet the need throughout the community and, and uh, you know, in, in, a, in this really challenging time. So thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Any questions for the mayor? No questions. Um, I would entertain a motion to accept uh, the request. So moved. So moved. Second. 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 Roll call. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Clarity? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Brady's? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. Blackie. Yes. Communications from other city offices and boards. Order number 92 from the city clerk, SOM Brand Corp. Request for a sandwich board sign for 112 Rancho Street. I would um, refer that to the Committee on Legal Affairs. Order number 94, the comment from the council president, called Wednesday, office for the city clerk position. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve um, approve that letter, and then we'll move that along to human resources so we can finally officially hire a city clerk. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Ames? Baldwin? Yes. 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 Flowers? Yes. Frady's? Frady's? One falls asleep sometimes. Husband? <laughs> yes. Yes. Brand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. Milwaukee. Yes. And I must say that uh, it's been a really difficult time for you to jump into the position of acting city clerk, but you've performed, you've performed amazing so far. So we only have good things to look forward to. I would entertain a motion to accept the late file from or for, on order number 95 from Councilor Houseman. 
So moved. Second. Uh, roll call. Oh. Yes. Feldman? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Brady's? Oh, sorry, I went out of order. Flowers? Yes. Brady's? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotunda? Yes. Guansi? Yes. And Council Houseman, would you like to either read your report or make a few comments on it? Uh, well, the report's fairly lengthy, so uh, unless you want me to read it, I won't. I'll just uh, summarize it uh, to say that uh, we are uh, in the midst of a uh, uh, great and urgent need for uh, housing for homeless here in Beverly. And there are efforts underway uh, potentially to find uh, to use uh, St. Mary's uh, Convent, which is vacant, has been vacant for a while, uh, to uh, potentially use that site uh, as a location for uh, housing uh, folks from uh, River House. Uh, whether that happens will be up to sort of a regional discussion amongst mayors, uh, but that uh, consider that is uh, a potential uh, that is under consideration. That sort of summarizes uh, the uh, the report. And what would you like us to do with your letter? Refer it to committee, refer it to the mayor's office? Um, well, it, it is a report. So I, I actually think it can be uh, received in place on file unless you think it's appropriate for it to rest in, I suppose it could go to public. Well, actually, uh, I suppose it could go to public services. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, but I leave it to your discretion on uh, your discretion at that. Okay, uh, Council Flaherty would like to make a comment. Yeah. Council Hausman, are there other places up for consideration besides St. Mary's? Uh, within the city, not that I'm aware of. I, you know, the the uh, the mayors uh, of Lynn, Salem, and Beverly have uh, looked at. Uh, uh, and inquired about many different locations, uh, none of which have really uh, panned out. Uh, it's possible that the, that the convent might not pan out, none, but none of the others have uh, really been, um, have really uh, been either permission given or suited to their purpose. Uh, there is a, um, as I think you may have read in last week's Salem Evening News, there is a, uh, a center at Salem Field House um, next to their high school, which has both a isolation area for folks who need to be in self-isolation for 14 days, and then sort of a stepped up area uh, for folks who actually maybe need to be in quarantine. There's also a regional center uh, that has been set up by the state, uh, by MEMA, Massachusetts uh, Emergency uh, Management a Agency, I believe. Uh, for for homeless folks who have actually tested positive uh, and need medical treatment, uh, so uh, you know the 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 capacity is fairly limited at the Salem Field House for those in self isolation. There are sites uh, for ten women, ten men at this point. There's not staffing to do more than that. Uh, there are uh, ten additional quarantine sites there as well. Uh, for folks who have actually, you know, tested positive or, or showing, uh, you know, showing uh, presence of the virus. So um, capacity is fairly limited. Uh, those sites, the field house, the Lexington site, and any hospitalization, of course, are uh, reactive to the situation. The prospect uh, or the potential for using the convent would uh, would would hopefully be a proactive step that could be taken to uh, create a um, a housing in which uh, folks who are presently at River House and unable to self isolate uh, because there are too many people in too small a space uh, would be able to um, uh, have housing that would by essentially by definition due to the physical space because there are separate rooms with uh, wash basins and so forth, uh, would be able to maintain appropriate social distancing. So it would be a proactive step. Um, it's, it's not a perfect site. None of the sites are perfect, uh, but it is measurably better than what is presently available at River House and uh, which 
in in my personal opinion is sort of a uh, uh, a site that it, it 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 seems given the 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 spread the contagion of the of the virus that uh, it may only be a question of time in my opinion not a question of when uh, that that River House might end up with an infection at which point uh, the entire um, uh, the entire center the entire site would have to be shut down. So this is a way to take a, it would be a way to take a proactive step. Um, you know, that process is still very much uh, underway. Uh, and, uh, you know, I know that the mayor has been um, uh, involved as, and I also want to give a thanks to Councilor Ames and Councilor Flaherty for help, helping at different points move along considerations of uh, providing uh, housing for the homeless and, and including St. Mary's. So um, I, I, that's perhaps a, I don't know, if, I, hopefully that answers your question, Councilor Flaherty. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Ames. First, I wanted to, I want to sincerely thank Councilor Houseman and the city, the mayor for um, working collaboratively with the other communities and just trying to find, a proactive solution. Um, I think this is really an important public health issue is one as well as one that speaks to just who we are as a community and our genuine general humanity towards each other. So it's important. I, I just was hoping that Councillor Houseman or the mayor might be able to speak to a time frame, hopeful, and sort of some budget. I know you had some budget numbers in your first um, go around, uh, the first memo, and I was wondering if there was any, you know, um, thing you could share with us for budget and time frame. Thank you. And that was a question for either the mayor or Council Houseman. I would defer to the mayor if he's online. Hi, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So there are a number. There are a number of things that probably need to be to be touched on here. Um, first, um, Councilor Hausman and, and I have talked um, over the weekend about things, and and we have both had communications with the uh, with the uh, Beverly Catholic Collaborative. Uh, I can tell you that the request that we made to the collaborative, uh, which through them was made to the archdiocese. Um, was for a way to address the isolation and self-quarantining needs of our um, homeless individuals. Um, a suggestion that um, that the site would be used for something different than that is not something that we have before them as a request. I have no idea whether that would be considered. Uh, we are awaiting a response on the request uh, that we have made. Um, so there are a number of, of kind of levels of, of need here and um, initially isolation isolation of somebody who tests positive uh, who is uh, symptomatic but not so sick that they need to be in the hospital and can isolate somewhere uh, with supports and and, and um, supervision and check-ins right so uh, as counselor said the state has worked hard um, to set up isolation sites they now have um, the the initial site was in Lexington. There's now one in Pittsfield. They are uh, trying to um, uh, finalize getting a Revere site and a Cambridge site up. These are all hotels. Um, and so, you know, the thought is that if somebody needs to isolate, um, they, they need to be uh, in one space and not go out for four, up to 14 days. Uh, so a self-contained unit that has a bath, shower, uh, even in some cases, kitchen, um, uh, television, and 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 the like is all really you know, kind of needed to stay in one place for all that time. Um, then, as we were uh, discussing with the with the um, the church, the possibilities at at St. Mary's, the our work regionally led to uh, the identification and the agreement that the Salem High School Fieldhouse would meet the needs for isolation potentially and definitely self quarantining. Um, it's become clear as that was being set up that we hope that any isolation needed there would only be very, uh, very time limited as someone was waiting to get a, a test result uh, and then referred over to one of the isolation sites uh, regionally. Um, so that changed the way that um, 
that we're looking at the uh, the convent uh, at St. Mary's, and you know the the um, um, the leadership at, at the local Catholic collaborative is trying to be um, uh, you know trying to be responsive and listen to what our needs are and try to understand understand our needs and see if they can be uh, helpful. And as I said, we're we're awaiting a response on on that initial uh, request, which I think they understood by the time uh, we really you know kind of last spoke with them that when you look at the St. Mary's convent and you look at the fact that the Salem field house is set up and the isolation is taken care of, that it really would be kind of a pressure release, kind of a, a, a next step or I don't want to say a last resort, but um, only to be really needed if in fact Salem gets oversubscribed. Um, and so again, if, you know, for them to consider something different, if that hasn't been brought to them, I'm not sure how that would be received. Um, I do know that um, in, in speaking with uh, Jason Etheridge at, at Lightbridge, the Lightbridge director, um, the the information about um, what is actually the capacity at Salem in, in kind of more well-defined, he said this afternoon that they are currently set up for 45 individuals, that they could go as high as 100. He said if they were to were to um, take on more than 45, he'd probably add staffing. Uh, but there's certainly um, enough space and enough um, separate spaces. There's the large, wide open field house. There's a second smaller gym, and then there are the, the um, locker room areas. So there are four real separate spaces that you could look at there. Um, and then, you know, I also talked with them a, a bit more about the census at both River House and the Salem uh, Lifebridge shelter itself, both of which censuses are down from their capacity. So I think the conversation around, um, you know, the, the populations that are there <clears throat> and, excuse me, an ability to distance better, I think that's a really uh, valuable conversation that Councillor raises. I think it's one that will be uh, probably uh, explored more uh, significantly now that the, sh the, the temporary shelter uh, is up and available for use. So I'll just I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Councilor Houseman. Uh, yeah, I guess the only comment I would make is um, th there have been, uh, I think, two separate asks. There was an initial uh, request um, that I submitted to the collaborative uh, maybe going on two weeks ago. Um, and so, you know, the mayor and I have been talking and, and, and trying to uh, you know, coordinate uh, communication, uh, defer I mean, deferring largely to the mayor, but having continuing conversations uh, with the Catholic Collaborative and the Archdiocese. So uh, you know, the mayor and I have agreed to, to, to talk more about the potential use of the convent as, uh, as potential housing, as opposed to, um, you know, which, which I view as sort of preventative measuring uh, a measure uh, to attempt to bend the curve uh, for the River House residents and perhaps others as well, um, versus what he's described as uh, sort of uh, a, a safety valve for isolation or quarantine. And you know the 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 discussion and the the learning process uh, around guidance and protocols and what is possible evolves pretty much on a daily basis. So it, it is a continuing conversation as we try to um, most appropriately um, address, you know, the evolving situation. Uh, and, you know, the, the kind of use for the convent, I think, is, is part of that evolving set of circumstances and conversation. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, so why don't we leave that alive and we'll refer that to the committee on, uh, no, Stacey Ames, Councillor Ames would like to speak again. Yeah, Mr. President, Ames, sorry. I, I don't think I answered Councillor Ames's question. Did, does she want to maybe repeat it and I'll try to give it an, an answer? Councillor Ames? Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I was looking for a timeline and um, also some idea of the capital, you know, the money it would cost to set this up. But I also think that, you know, as you've been an extremely effective communicator um, in terms of social distancing and had some innovative ways to um, encourage that for the city, I think that this is yet another really, really important 
way that we can as a community social distance. So, but thank you. Okay, no thank thanks, you, thank you, well, well said. Uh, as far as the setup, um, if we if we find that it's um, that it's necessary for the convent to be put into use, uh, and, and for, first if the if the archdiocese and the and the local Catholic collaborative agree that it, it makes sense to do so, and then we find a need to activate it, I think we're, our our sense is that with the relevant city departments uh, devoted to making sure that the um, the um, safety improvements, which are largely around um, uh, alarms um, and making sure that that um, doors are in the proper working order and um, that the plumbing is is as need be um, i think I think it would be something that we could put up in a matter of a couple of days so we, we you know we'd be we'd be tracking the need and you know ready to to uh, to move on it when needed if it comes to that so thank you again thank you your honor anyone else thank you all for your comments uh, Ms. Kent, would you please refer that to the Committee on Public Services? Sure. Are you coming back on the screen? There you are. Um, so we're going to go to reports from committees now. Now, Ms. Kent, we set a public hearing for the uh, matching funds for the airport grant for what time? The airport was for... 810? 810, yes. So the one that we have in um, finance and property for the COLA adjustment? We'll set that one for 820, okay? 820, okay. So now we'll start reports from committees. So this is from finance and property, order number 70. It was a late file for the reappointment of Brian Ailes for finance director to serve as the mayor's representative of the retirement board. All those in favor of that appointment? Roll call. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Larry? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Brady? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotondo? Yes. Guante? Yes, thank you. Order number 71, um, the grant for $48,000 for supportive infrastructure project grant from Mass Seaport Economic Council. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve that grant. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call in favor. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Clarity? Flowers? Yes. Brady? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. Quanti? Yes. I like it when everybody's face comes up. <laughs> Ms. Kent, next. Order number 78. This is for transfer up to 195000 from City's Reserve for Unforeseen Account into Building Inspections Department to pay costs for a demolished property at 11 Charles Street. We're going to set a public hearing at 7.15 on April 27th. Um, a motion to approve that request? So moved. So moved. Second. Uh, in favor, roll call. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Brady? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. Guante? Yes. Council Houseman looks like the president sitting there with the flag <laughs> behind him at Camp David. I was impressed with that flag. I did. It came in very handy. Ms. Kent? Order number 79. Beverly Retirement Board Chapter 188 Acts of the Acts of 2010 relative to municipal relief to retirement system. And we're going to set a public uh, set a public hearing on April 27th at 8:20 um, p.m. Uh, a motion to approve that request. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call. Ames. Yes. Feldman. Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Brady's? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Brand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. Guancy? Yes. 
Order number 84, it was late filed for a grant for $98,206.59 from the Mass Executive Office of Elder Affairs. Uh, a motion to approve that grant. So moved. So moved. Second. Don't be shy. <laughs> Roll call. Ames? Yes. Elvin? Yes. Clarity? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Brady's? Altman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. And Guanti? Yes. Okay, now we're going to move on to Legal Affairs Committee. Order number 73, proposed amendment to Article 15-24A for a contributory retirement board of the city ordinance. Um, can we put that one on hold? I think, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Keep that one in committee. Yep. Do we have to vote on that or not? I don't think so. Okay. Order number 74, reappoint Beverly Historic District Commission, Mr. William Finch, 50 Front Street. Uh, motion to approve that one. So moved. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, roll call. James? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Clarity? Yes. yes. Flowers? Yes. Brady's? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yeah. Nintendo? Yes. Quancy? Yes, and thank you to Mr. Finch for continuing his service on the Historic Districts Commission. Ms. Order, Kent? order number 77, Vehicles and Traffic Ordinance Revision Compliant with Mass DOT Traffic Control Agreement. Hold that one. Yeah. No, we can vote that one up. Uh, motion to approve that request. So moved. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Frady's? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. Wansi? Yes. And Order number 85 for Hawkins and Pedals license for Ellen Wilson at 6 Sawyer Road. Uh, a motion to approve that request. So moved. So moved. Second. Roll call. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Clarity? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Frady's? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotondo? Yes. Guanci. Yes. Okay, now we're moving on to public services. Um, order number 72, proposed 2020 member rate for the Golf and Tennis Club. I would entertain a motion to approve what was presented before us. So moved. Second. 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 Roll call. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Brady's? Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rontundo? Yes. Wanti? Uh, yes, it must be getting past Councilor Frady's um, bedtime because he sounds like he's getting a little agitated. <laughs> Florida hours. Florida hours. And remember, although we approved the rates at the golf course, the golf course is still closed. Ms. Kent? Floor number 75? Reappointments for the Beverly Waste Reduction Committee, Susan Higgins, Joyce Herman, and Sandy Burgess. Uh, motion to approve those. So, so moved. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call. Oh, sorry. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Clarity? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Brady's? Yes. Houseman? <laughs> yes. Rian? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. Guanti? Yes. Order 76. Reappointment for the Register of Voters, Mrs. Fran McDonald, one of my favorites. Uh, yes, she is, one of all of our favorites. I would entertain a motion to approve that request. So moved. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Clarity? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Brady's? Yes. Houseman? 
Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. Yes, and we'll thank uh, Mrs. McDonald for her continued service. And order number three is a petition from National Grid and Verizon for the McPherson Drive to set a public hearing on April 27th at 7.30. Uh, motion to approve. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Clarity? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Frades? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Mukundo? Yes. Nguansi? Yes. In order number 81, petition for National Grid at Verizon for Ball Street to set a public hearing on April 27th at 7.45. Uh, motion to approve. Yes. So moved. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call. Ames? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Ladies? Yes. Houseman? Yes. Rand? Yes. Rotundo? Yes. Walker? Yes. That's all I got. And that's all we have for tonight. Uh, I, first, I want to thank Brian Ailes for being here, Catherine Barrett, Dylan Benson from the City Solicitor's Office, of course, Mayor Cahill, and our City Council Budget Analyst, Jerry Perry, has been uh, watching and listening in also. Um, quick thank you to Mayor Cahill and the Beverly Board of Health for keeping everybody updated here in the city with uh, messages and emails and posts on the city website. Uh, special thanks to Jim Wallace in the Beverly Chamber of Commerce, Jim Wallace from Beverly Main Streets for keeping uh, the business community updated with uh, the changes that seem to be happening weekly. Um, does anybody else have anything to add before we adjourn? Mr. Mr. President, me. Yes. Mr. President, this is Mary Kay. I just want to say aloud for everybody, um, we miss Aaron Clausen already very much, um, and, and I'm excited to be able to bring um, Darlene Wynn's name before you. I think she'll do a fantastic job uh, with, you know, with your approval. I just want to take a minute to, to thank Aaron publicly. Uh, we hope that uh, we, we certainly intend that when we get through this, uh, um, where we're at right now with COVID-19, that we're going to have a proper send-off for him, have him back and have a nice chance for people to thank him. He's been a, a tremendous professional. He's done some amazing work on our behalf for six plus years. And I, I just want to note that he, uh, he's a wonderful man. He's, he's, a, he's a great planner and a better person. And he's been just a joy to work with all this time. So I want to make sure that I have the chance to say that. Thank you all so much. Thank you. And I'm sure we'll all, we, we echo those comments. He's been a pleasure to work with as of, as are all your department heads, Your Honor. Um, anybody else? Okay. So just to wrap up, I think that everybody did a great job tonight. I appreciate everybody's patience. Um, and for making comments. I guarantee you our next meeting, full city council meeting, which will be held remotely on April 27th at 7 p.m., uh, probably won't go as smooth because we have five or six public hearings to take care of, but Ms. Kent and I will practice, and if anybody else has any suggestions on how we can make um, everything go smoother, uh, I'm always open to them. So that said, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Roll call. Ames? Yes. Uh oh, I lost my roll call sheet. Um, Feldman. Me. <laughs> Feldman. Yes. <laughs> Frades? I'm not going out of yes. order. Houseman? Yes. Flaherty? Yes. Flowers? Yes. Rand? Yes. 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 And thanks to Kim Elaine at BevCam for making this all happen. We are adjourned. Thank you and good night, everyone.